What are you doing here? Why do you keep coming here and then leaving? What do you want? Oh, the gift. I forgot about the gift. But you remembered. If I take it from you, will I understand all of this? The last time you left bef before I opened it. Please don't go. lovely but what does it mean who are you why are you giving me this present what does all this mean mm. we do have to leave look mrs. Scott it's not gonna be as bad as you think you can Visit your husband every Sunday. It'll be all right. I mean, we'll be in touch, I promise. Don't worry. Mr. Scott? I have to go. With one eye open, I was. Then I heard him scream. It nearly took ten years off my life. <laughs> you must have had a very bad dream. <laughs> what are you doing in here? And how come you're not dressed for bed? Uh, well, I, I, I wasn't tired. And uh, so I thought I'd, I'd stay up and read. In here? Molly, the man needs looking after. Emily, how could you? If I hadn't come in here, you'd have spent the whole night alone with an perfect stranger. I know everything I need to know about him, Molly. Oh, really? 
I know that he's hurt and that he needs me. You were talking to him. What was that all about? I, I was just trying to comfort him and, and let him know that he's safe. Emily, if you're concerned with anybody's safety, it should be ours. Oh, Molly, please, I keep trying to tell you. He's, he's nothing to worry about. He's not going to ravish us and, and run off with the family fortune. I don't even want to hear you say such things. Would you please stop worrying? But that man could be a dangerous criminal, for all you know. Oh, he doesn't look like a dangerous criminal. Oh, Molly, the man is injured badly. Can't you see that? What a time for your father to be out of town. Look, it really is getting late. Why don't you go to bed? Because I'm not tired now. Besides that, young lady, I'm supposed to be taking care of you, and I don't intend to let you spend the night in here alone with him. Well, I'm going to stay here. He may need something. If you want to play Florence Nightingale, I suggest you become a volunteer at County General. Oh, Molly, I've had just about enough of your nonsense. Shh. Now, why don't you just go to bed? Don't you raise your voice to me. What's gotten into you? Look, Molly, why don't you just go back to your room and pull your covers over your head and have sweet dreams, okay? If he moves a muscle, you call me. Good night, Molly. That was the first time I've ever stood up to her. And you gave me the strength to do it. Damn. That isn't somebody telling me there's a fire in this hotel. It's gonna be big trouble. Who is it? It's me. Open up. Hello, my pet. What are you doing here? I thought I'd do some bird watching, and you are the most beautiful blackbird I know. You know you have some nerve. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? No, as a matter of fact. Hey. What's wrong? Did I forget the secret knock? Ellie, do you know what time it is? Yes, as a matter of fact, if my memory serves me, we've uh, met before at this time. Only were too happy to see me. That was ancient history, darling. History has a way of repeating itself, Napoleon said. What do you want? <laughs> Your company, my love. Elliot, it is very late and I'm very tired, so would you please go away? I refuse to leave this doorstep. Now, what would your neighbor say if they saw a strange man camping out there? All right, look, you've got five minutes and then I am kicking you out. All right, five minutes is more than enough. Time has always stood still when we were together. Why didn't you call before you came? I could have saved you a cab fare. You must have known I was going to come. You dressed for the occasion. I do not appreciate being awakened in the middle of the night. You can get back under the covers, honey. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind at all joining you. Have you been drinking? <laughs> I was just relaxed. Why don't you just pour us a nightcap so we can unwind together? What's the matter? You strike out at all the single spars? Mmm. It's not nice. You're the only woman who really turns me on. Listen, it is late, and flattery will get you nowhere. Besides, I'm a married woman. I've never been the kind to kiss and tell. Look, Elliot, will you just leave? Raven, please let me stay. Get away from here. Get out. Some pity is all I ask. <laughs> Some charity. Some compassion. Yes, who do I look like, dear Abby? You're the one I want to share my innermost thoughts with. Lucky me. You know, I'm in a very difficult situation. I just lost my wife. And now, today, I just lost my fiance, too. Well, this is the perfect time for me to say something to you. Have you ever heard uh, the old saying that bad things happen in threes? Yes. Well, I have news for you. <clears throat> in case you didn't know, you've just lost me. I come here to talk about our future. And now you tell me we have none. Unrequited love is such a bore. I'm so sorry, darling. You're sorry? I give up Nola Madison for you, and you, you say you're sorry. You did not give up Nola Madison. She gave you up, lover boy. That's not true. Oh, yes, that's right. She gave herself up to the police. Uh, well, it started a long time ago. It happened the moment we met again. <laughs> 
Elliot. Look, it's a good thing you didn't cancel your engagement, because if you had caught Nola in a bad day, she might have treated you just like she did Margo. You know, it came, came as quite a shock to me, sharing bed and board with a murderess. Do you really care? Now, do you think I would have condoned a thing like that? I don't know, probably not. You seem to be very picky about which commandments you choose to keep. Oh, Raven. You know, since we've known each other, this is the first time that I've been free. I think what you're saying is now that Nola and Marco are gone, you're left without a woman. You know how much I care for you. Mm hmm And I also know how much you hate to be alone. So you want Raven to rescue you, right? Hey. We always had something special. Yes. Well, I appreciate your offer, but I pass. I think you should do the noble thing and wait until Nola gets out of prison. That should only be 20 or 30 years. Yes, I don't find the situation at all amusing. <laughs> Elliot, why don't you just go to California and become a movie star? Isn't that what you want? <laughs> Considering the adverse publicity we're bound to receive, I doubt if the film is ever going to be released. That takes care of my career right there. Oh, what are you going to do then? Well, what I always do, I guess, when a project fizzles out, start over. And you want to start over with me? I would like that very much. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't. All right. Elliot, I have plans, and they do not include you. Your plans can be changed. Not these. Raven, it's yes. something very pressing. That forces you not to accept my offer. Now, come on now, my sweet. I know you're after something. Now, you just tell me what it is. Well, it's very true. I am after something very, very important. But your five minutes were up a long time ago, and I think you have to go home. Bye-bye. <laughs> I just can't sleep. Oh, well, I can get you something. I don't want a sedative. Well, in case you haven't noticed, it is the middle of the night. Well, what difference does that make? Look, I'd love nothing more than to stand here and chat with you, but I have work to do, and you, you should be in bed. Maybe you can do me a favor. I'd really like to see my baby. Oh, she's just fine. I looked in on her a minute ago. I understand that, but I'd like to see her. April, the nursery's closed. I mean, I'll make sure you get to see her first thing in the morning, okay? No, I want to see her now, please. Look, she's, she's all I've got. Well, it is against all the hospital rules. Babies do sleep a whole lot. I, I suppose you wouldn't really be disturbing her. No. Well, how about I trade you a few minutes with your daughter for your promise to go right back to bed? Okay? You got it, I promise. Okay. Oh, I'm sure Julie will be very happy to see her mom. Why don't you wait by the window? you. I had to talk to you, though. Oh, boy. You look so peaceful. So contented. I can't tell you how many times I wish I could, could just crawl right in there next to you. Be protected from this rotten world. <sighs> Listen, I have um, something to tell you. You know that um, tall, dark, handsome man who used to come to see you, your daddy? Well, I have some bad news for you. He's dead. See, um, he was on a train, and the um, train was in a wreck. bringing him to prison for a crime that he didn't even commit. By the time
finally realized he was innocent, it was too late. Someone played a terrible trick on us. I don't understand it, I wish I did. You never even got a chance to know him. Well, he was a wonderful man. He was very kind and very caring. And he loved you so much, and I want you to grow up to be proud of him. He's gone now, Julia. But we've got each other. Listen, I'm going to be leaving here tomorrow. I, I wish I could take you with me, but I can't. Not just yet. You've got to stay here a little while longer. Get a little bigger, a little stronger. Don't you worry, I'll be here every day to see you. Before you know it, I'm going to be able... I'm going to be able to touch you. Take you home. You and me. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. From the minute Molly and I brought you into the house, I thought there was something familiar about you. That you were someone special. The more I look at you, the surer I am. I know, with, without all those cuts and bruises, you're the most handsome man. I could be certain. Maybe I can be. I just got to reach him. I don't care what time it is. at this hour. You know very well who. No, no. He, you're not to disturb him. He'd be much more disturbed if he knew what was going on here. No, no. Daddy is not well. You, you know that. Now, that's why he went to Chicago to see Dr. Finch. Emily, now what are you doing? I could have sworn it was in here. Emily, will you stop rummaging in that drawer? You know... I thought I lost this months ago. Why is it you can never find what you're looking for when you're looking for it? Emily, will you stop that before you break up the house? Why don't you tell me what it is you need and maybe I know where to find it? Oh, it has to be here. Emily, I just straightened that drawer and now you're ruining all my hard work. You didn't throw anything out, did you? Emily, you know better than that. I wouldn't do that without your permission. Oh, it has to be here. It just has to be. What has gotten into you? Ever since that man came into the house, you, your behavior has been stranger and stranger. If you must know, I am looking for an old photograph. Oh, your father put a whole slew of pictures in the family album. No, it wouldn't be there. Well, whose, pi whose picture is it? Well, what's it for? Oh, it's someone I knew a long time ago. Oh, it must be in with these. Who? Who? Yes, yes, here it is. Let me see it. No, I, I, I was right. I, I was right. There is a resemblance. A remarkable resemblance. Young lady, I think you owe me an explanation. It's incredible. I just can't believe it. You dash into the living room and practically tear it apart to find some picture, and then you dash up here. Now, what's all this about? Molly, t take a look at this. What, what do you see? It's a young boy. Yeah, but don't you recognize him? Look closer. Look, I am too tired for guessing games. Tell me what's on your mind. Look. Don't you recognize him? It's him. 
Surely you can see it. So that's what this is all about. You think that this trespasser is some long-lost friend of yours? No, he's, he's not a trespasser. Oh, I thought I'd never see him again. Well, I can't be as positive as you. That picture was taken years ago. Yeah, ten years. It's been ten years, Molly. But you're trying to compare a boy's face to that of a man's. Yes, but the features, look at the features. They're almost the same. I don't know. I suppose it could be. It is him. I know it. He's come back to me.